Okay, good morning and uh, welcome to uh, all of our guests, either here at the venue at Central Park Hotel uh, in Sofia, as well as those of you joining us uh, online from uh, Seoul, from uh, Sofia, and from other places around the world. It is my pleasure uh, to uh, welcome you to the second edition of the uh, Bulgarian Korean uh, Bilateral uh, Policy Forum entitled Cooperation Fit for the Future. It is organized by the Economic Policy Institute with the kind financial support of the Korea Foundation. It is an initiative that we started last year uh, as a celebration of the uh, 30th anniversary of establishing diplomatic relations between the Republic of Bulgaria and the Republic of Korea. And we are very thankful that at that initial start, uh, we had also the support of the Korean embassy here in Sofia, as well as the Bulgarian Diplomatic Institute of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Now, a year on from our uh, initial start of the project, uh, we would like to focus a bit more on the key priority areas uh, that were outlined uh, during last year's uh, forum and uh, move on from there. Uh, throughout the seminar, throughout the forum, you will uh, be able uh, to hear presentations from our new cohort of next generation Korea fellows, as well as uh, different policy experts from Bulgaria and Korea, touching upon issues related to economic recovery, trade, uh, green transition, uh, security and uh, uh, sustainable, uh, sustainable development, as well as also public policy innovation, and uh, strategic foresight related to good governance. But now, before we start, allow me to give the floor to the Executive Director of the Economic Policy Institute, Mr. Yasin Yurgiev, for uh, a welcome uh, address. Then he will be followed by uh, Mrs. Pan uh, uh, Min, who is the uh, Director of the Korea Foundation Berlin office, someone who was very instrumental in helping us select uh, the next generation of uh, uh, Korea fellows here in Sofia. And last but definitely not least, uh, we have the pleasure of welcoming uh, online uh, uh, Ambassador uh, Hoshik Lee, who uh, uh, would kindly also address the audience uh, on behalf of the Korean Embassy here in Sofia. First of all, uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, Mr. Yasin Gitkev, you have the floor now. Yeah, Mr. Chairperson, Dear Ms. Kyung Ming Bang, Your Excellency, Ambassador Lee, dear participants online and uh, offline, we are really happy to welcome you. And uh, I'm really honored uh, that I'm able to, to speak at the beginning of our second bilateral forum. And I would like to convey uh, the best wishes of our Board of Trustees to all the, the attendees here for making this event possible in these trying times. Uh, I will be really short, uh, since we have uh, plenty of uh, interesting and useful topics to be tackled during the day. But before uh, doing so, I would like just to mention that uh, this initiative, the second bilateral forum, uh, fits perfectly with our long-term commitment to provide a pl platform for uh, cooperation and exchange between the Republic of Bulgaria and uh, the Republic of South Korea. Uh, why? Because we think there's a lot, uh, a lot to do, a lot to, to share and a lot to learn. And there's uh, plenty of uh, bottom-up energy that we try to channelize in somehow, to, uh, in this way, to channel and to, to bring to forefront. Uh, this initiative, uh, this forum and the incubator uh, fit perfectly with uh, our areas of activity. On the one hand side, economy and competitiveness, secondly, good governance, uh, uh, and on third and not last place, uh, regional cooperation. And we're doing this uh, three fields of activity by involving young people. And this is why you see that uh, as an uh, in important part of this initiative, we have this uh, next generation uh, Korea Fellows Incubator. Uh, we started it last year uh, before the event uh, during which we marked uh, uh, and we celebrated the uh, anniversary since the establishment of diplomatic uh, relations. We're continuing with this uh, uh, this year and we look forward to its further development throughout the next years. Uh, what is uh, really appealing to me uh, that uh, the topics that have been covered by uh, the fellows uh, are really up to date. They are very important for Bulgaria. 
They are very important for the European Union, but they are also very important for Korea. Last year, the fellows, really uh, outstanding researchers with uh, extensive background and uh, with proven track record, uh, shed light on, on topics like e-governance, on uh, OECD, on, on uh, security, topics that are uh, actually of big importance for all the countries uh, in the world, but specifically be, uh, for Bulgaria and for, for, uh, for Korea. Topics uh, that are important because we can uh, gain a lot of knowledge from our uh, Korean partners. This year, uh, we have uh, three outstanding uh, fellows, uh, much younger than the fellows uh, last year, which is um, uh, really a very nice surprise for us. But uh, the other positive thing that I would like to highlight is that uh, uh, with holding the incubator this year, we were able to, to stretch, to expand the scope of, of the incubator and go beyond uh, the, the, the usual uh, dimension uh, Sophia Soul, because we engage also people who are based in Europe, Bulgarian natives, who are working on topics close to, to, to this dimension. And the first fellow actually uh, is a young Bulgarian who uh, at the time when she joined the incubator, she was studying in the Netherlands. So it's really, an asset and we are happy that uh, we're uh, ex expanding this uh, uh, geographical scope of the fellowship. And it is something that we very much value because we see that uh, there are many young people who could be the real ambassadors uh, and the real uh, drivers of bilateral cooperation. Uh, so I uh, promise to, to, to be short uh, and uh, I would like finally uh, to say, uh, Thank you, and to say, uh, to express my gratitude uh, to the Korea Foundation, our partner that makes this initiative uh, uh, possible. I would like also to thank to the Embassy uh, of uh, the Republic of uh, uh, Korea for making uh, uh, all this um, cooperation um, uh, such so so live and so so how to say uh, easy to to to. To, to, to do, uh, really, uh, it's, it's our uh, privilege and honor to, to have you as partners uh, for, this, uh, for this initiative, because in this way, we are able to combine the bottom-up uh, energy that we have with uh, our partners and uh, combine it with your institutional support, which is something that we uh, cherish a lot. Uh, so, uh, uh, so far for me, I'm looking forward to, to the very interesting day and just to share that I was one of the mentors of the fellow. So I'm really looking forward to see what is the final outcome of one of the papers. And the papers are really good. They're uh, full of uh, policy recommendations that are important, not only for Bulgaria, but also for our Korean partners, because we tackle topics like uh, Green Deal, like Green Transition. These are topics that are so comprehensive, that are so up to date, that all the countries in the world uh, uh, can learn a lot from each other. So this is really my final point. Thank you once again for being with us uh, online, offline, and in a hybrid manner. Enjoy the, the day, and I'm sure it will be uh, one of uh, the days that will bring a lot of new knowledge, new insights, and uh, new positive energy uh, to, the, to the relation that we have uh, between Sofia and Sofia. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Gurgiv. Uh, someone else who I believe is very curious to see the final result uh, of the enormous uh, research effort that was put forward by our Next Generation Korea Fellows, I assume, is uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Pang Kyung Min, who, as I mentioned, is the director of the Berlin Office of Korea Foundation uh, and our valuable partner in this, in in this initiative. Uh, she was um, very much involved in the initial stage of uh, uh, selecting the fellows and uh, heard their initial research proposals, which uh, I believe have come a long way uh, since uh, our uh, first uh, meeting. So uh, uh, Ms. Pang, you have the floor for a short uh, address to, to the audience and to our fellows. Thank you, Dr. Trifanova. Can you hear me all right? Yes, yes. Okay, great. Um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, um, good morning. Uh, on behalf of the Korea Foundation, I sincerely congratulate the hosting of the second Bulgaria and Republic of Korea Policy Forum. I'm especially grateful for the efforts of Executive Director Yasin Gerkiev 
and Dr. Mariana Trifanova at the Economic Policy Institute in organizing this invaluable occasion during these challenging times. I would also like to express my sincere gratitude to the Korean Embassy in Bulgaria for its cooperation throughout the entire journey. The Korea Foundation has been proud to support the Next Generation Korea Fellows Incubator Program. And it is a privilege to witness this serving as a catalyst for stronger Bulgaria-Korea cooperation. Above all, we are most pleased that this incubator program and this forum have created an agora in the truest sense of the word. In other words, a space where future policy experts can enhance the depth and breadth of their knowledge and learn how to exchange opinions actively and respectfully. This year, the Korea Foundation celebrates its 30th anniversary, supporting Korea-related policy research and creating a global knowledge community has been a hallmark objective since our founding. The Korea Foundation will continue its efforts for scintillating exchanges of ideas and insights and fostering next generation experts to further sustainable and future oriented relations. Well, I'll make it uh, short as well. And before I close, I would like to thank the Economic Policy Institute once again for its contributions for this forum as well as everyone else who has joined us online and in person in Sofia. I'm certain that the dialogues that take place today will help create a stronger relationship between our two countries. And I encourage you to not hesitate to participate in them. And last but not least, I wish everyone a healthy and safe rest of the year. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Bang. It is always a pleasure to have you here with us. And uh, I do uh, appreciate taking the time uh, to address our audience. Uh, now we would like to proceed to our next partner, uh, the Korean Embassy here in Sofia. And it is truly uh, a pleasure to welcome and to give the floor to His Excellency Ambassador, Ambassador Hoshi Yi. Ambassador Lee, you have the floor. Uh, and good afternoon to Korea. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you very well. Okay, good. Uh, very nice to meet you on, on, online. It is my great uh, pleasure for me to be part of the second Bulgaria Korea Police Forum. First of all, let me express my deepest gratitude to the colleagues of Economic Police Institute of Bulgaria <clears throat> and the Korea Foundation also for the great effort to realize this event uh, to, uh, during these uh, troubled times. Since the establishment of the ties 31 years ago, our two countries have built solid trust and friendly relations in various, in various fields, despite the geographic distance. In recent years, relations between Korea and Bulgaria has developed further uh, through active high-level high personal exchanges. Having, sa uh, having said that, I'm certain that uh, we still have the potential to further expand uh, sustainable cooperation. In this respect, 2021 Next Generation Korea follows Incubator in Bulgaria, an in initiative launched by the EPI with the support of the KF. Uh, provide a meaningful uh, opportunity. Uh, young Bulgarian researchers with great interest and affection for Korea-Bulgaria relations to present their insight, idea, and suggestion on bilateral cooperation fit for future. We are looking for uh, 2020 well, uh, 22 with great expectation for further advancement of our bilateral relations in every sphere. I believe that uh, today's forum will help us to address the priority for our future relations and set up goals to be achieved, especially within the framework of the wider EU-Korea relations. 
Last but not least, I would like to uh, give my special thanks to Miss uh, Mariana Trifonov, Nova, sorry, <laughs> Nova, okay, uh, of EPI, who is also one of the precious Global Korea Scholarship uh, alumni. And I look forward to continue, uh, continue, continuing affection and research on Korea from next generation, Korea follows in Bulgaria. I wish you, you all a uh, fruitful deliberation and a very successful forum. Thank you and bravo Daria. Thank you so much, uh, Ambassador E. It's truly an honor and a pleasure. And uh, on behalf of all of us uh, here, uh, we're very grateful for uh, taking the time to join us and to address uh, the audience. Uh, we here at the EPI look forward to uh, continuing our successful cooperation with the embassy and uh, also to contributing to the development of uh, bilateral relations uh, in the future, because indeed uh, the motto of this initiative is uh, uh, fit for the future together uh, and uh, we look ahead towards uh, the challenges of uh, the uh, year 2022 and, of course, ahead. Uh, I would once again like to uh, uh, thank all of those who are joining us online as well. Uh, we have uh, uh, with us online uh, representatives of the Bulgarian uh, Embassy in Korea, as well as the uh, commercial uh, and economic uh, uh, section of the embassy. Uh, we have uh, also uh, watching us online and, and uh, following the debate representatives of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Bulgaria, of various uh, uh, business uh, and uh, trade and uh, commercial uh, uh, chambers, um, representatives of the academic community in both Bulgaria and Korea. Uh, and of course, we also have uh, young students uh, interested in uh, uh, Korea and uh, also uh, curious about uh, the region of East Asia. And uh, now I, I propose we proceed with uh, the actual uh, agenda of the forum and then the topics, the important topics that we would like to discuss. As I uh, mentioned at the beginning, during last year's edition of the forum, we outlined several priority areas for cooperation. And uh, one of these uh, uh, areas was uh, energy and green transition. So uh, it is uh, indeed very telling that um, among the uh, research proposals that we received from the Next Generation Korea Fellows Incubator Selection Process, quite a few were tackling this important topic, but two came, uh, so to speak, uh, on top and, and two were selected to participate. So uh, during uh, our first panel entitled the uh, EU uh, uh, Korea Cooperation on Economic Recovery and Green Transition Impact on Bulgaria Korea Relations, we'll also have the chance uh, to hear presentations from uh, Anita Dangova, who um, will be uh, talking a bit more about how we could reconcile uh, the good intentions behind uh, the EU's newly proposed uh, carbon border adjustment mechanism with the, the WTO uh, law and uh, with EU's uh, trade deals, uh, and what would be the impact on relations with uh, one of our key partners, South Korea, as well as the impact on the economy of uh, Bulgaria. Next, we will uh, tackle the issue on how the European Green Deal and the Korean Green New Deal provide opportunities for cooperation between the two countries uh, and a specific focus will be placed on uh, the offshore renewable energy transition. Uh, what lessons could be learned from the EU strategy on offshore renewable uh, energy to be implemented also in Korea and to lead to a continuation of this uh, successful partnership. And the second topic will be covered uh, by our uh, very own Next Generation Korea Fellow, Denis Pavo, who is joining us uh, from Busan in South Korea uh, today, where he studies uh, at Donga University. Lastly, I would also like to invite to join me here at the panel, Slavina Vasileva, who uh, was among our first Next Generation Korea Fellows uh, at the inaugural uh, incubator initiative last year, who uh, together with uh, a, a fantastic uh, young Korean uh, uh, scholar, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Chang Jun Yi, who is also present online, I believe, uh, 
uh, they wrote a paper that aimed at finding uh, new ways uh, to develop the bilateral trade relationship between Bulgaria uh, and uh, Korea. Uh, so they're suggesting a policy tool for efficient bilateral trade uh, based on the uh, product opportunity index and the revealed comparative advantage. So uh, if we could make a quick uh, switch here at the front so that Slovenia could join us. And then we'll, I propose we start first by uh, Anita Danguba uh, and uh, just uh, maybe a second for our colleague to, to, to show us the slides, the presentation. Uh, Anita, you could use this pointer. You, you just have to select, no, no, no uh, to the side. Let me show you. Sorry, slow this. Okay. Great, perfect. Um, hello, everyone from me as well. As Mariana already introduced me briefly, I'm Anita, and I've studied um, international trade and investment law in the University of Amsterdam, and I've just graduated with, um, with that LLM. I, to be honest, I'm very happy that I took part of this initiative because uh, the topic that I've worked on is, in my opinion, something that will really be discussed in the following years. It's a very hot topic. As you know, the carbon border adjustment mechanism is something that is planned to be implemented around 2026. So we are up to see a variety of discussions, debates around the mechanism and its impact on the economy of the EU trading partners, as well as the EU member states in it. Uh, so as you can see on the screen, the, the topic is the reconciling the carbon border adjustment mechanisms for the protections with the law of the WTO, the World Trade Organization, and the EU's bilateral trade deals. And the um, very important point here is that we are going to look um, at the topic from the perspective of the, uh, uh, South Korea and Bulgaria on the other side. So Broadly, the, um, the paper has three main important parts. The first part is talking about the legitimacy of that mechanism with the international trade law rules. As you know, such mechanisms and such policies which are affecting the trade between WTO trading partners need to be compliant with certain rules of the, uh, of the WTO. The second part is more specifically um, talking about the free trade agreement between the European Union and Korea. And more specifically, on the opportunities and the, the cooperation channels that exist uh, between, uh, between these two parties based on that agreement. And the third part, finally, is the um, action that Bulgaria could take to um, possibly facilitate the dialogue between Korea and the uh, EU on the other side. Okay, so the first part is, as I say, uh, referring to the legitimacy of the mechanism under the uh, WTO law. So I know that it's a very legal sort of, uh, you know, um, topic here, and I, I know that many of you may not be legal professionals, but I'll, I'll be as clear as possible, and also as quick as possible uh, with this point. Now, there are two key um, sort of requirements or uh, conditions which are important so that this paper, well, uh, this uh, mechanism, uh, is legitimate under the WTO law. The first important condition is that the mechanism does not discriminate between domestically produced products and like foreign products. And this, the second condition is that this TBAM uh, does not discriminate between like um, foreign products, so like products of uh, EU trading partners, so like products coming from Korea, for example, and products coming from the Russian Federation. Now, the paper broadly argues that the first condition would probably be um, okay, in a way, because the uh, mechanism does not aim to discriminate between domestic and uh, foreign produced products. And this is clear from the, the way it, the mechanism is going to work. So I'm going to quote the uh, EU Commission on how the mechanism is going to work. So the EU Commission is saying that the EU importers who buy carbon certificates corresponding to the carbon price that would have been paid under the EU emissions trading system had the goods been produced under the EU's carbon pricing rules. So we can see that the mechanism does not aim at discriminating or protecting the, the domestic industries, but it's, it's trying to provide a level, a level playing field. However, when it comes to the second condition, and this is um, also, I forgot to say, it's, it's also for the um, uh, MFN, uh, sort of the, um, yeah, it just it came out of my mind. So this is the uh, MFN clause, um, basically, which is that the, the EU must not discriminate between um, like domestic products, uh, like foreign products, sorry. 
Now, the contentious part here is that the mechanism, there have been certain ideas that the mechanism is applied in a different way, depending on whether the EU trading partner has introduced similar policies, so similar carbon uh, taxing policies. Now, this is going to be um, a problematic issue because if the EU is introducing the CBAM in this way, i.e. taking into account foreign uh, policies uh, similar to that one, then uh, this will probably be a breach of the WTO rules because the EU must not discriminate, uh, discriminate as I said, between its trading partners and uh, their products. However, um, what is important here is that there is a clause within the, uh, the, the law of the WTO that is saying that there are certain exceptions which are allowed in situations where these two first conditions are, met, uh, are breached. Now, this uh, exception is if, for example, the mechanism is trying to protect human life, plant life or uh, animal life or health, or if the mechanism is, for example, trying to preserve natural exhaustible resources. And both of these conditions are probably going to be met by the CBAM because probably it's trying to sort of support or um, preserve or contribute to the, the climate change problems. As you all know, it's an international issue and obviously the mechanism is trying to, to work for this issue. When it comes to the second uh, the point, which is that the, whether the CBAM is trying to preserve natural exhaustible resources, it has been defined by WTO jurisprudence, I, uh, the courts uh, in a way of the WTO, that the, 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 uh, the air actually qualifies as a um, natural exhaustible resource. So based on the uh, aforementioned points, basically the EU has a strong position to defend the CBAM, provided that uh, obviously certain uh, conditions are not uh, breached, such as, for example, if the EU is, uh, uh, in a way, trying to instigate the other states to implement certain uh, similar policies that would definitely not be um, uh, accepted by the WTO, and this article with the exceptions will not going to work. So it's very important to, to see how the EU is going to design this mechanism. But what I was trying to shift the attention to is that maybe the mechanism uh, should not be the core point that the EU focuses on, Maybe the EU should implement this mechanism as a temporary issue, uh, as a temporary measure, and should uh, make more effort on introducing uh, a global e uh, emissions trading system uh, by shifting the emissions trading system from a regional to a global level, rather than just focusing on justifying its CBA mechanism. So this is something I'm going to talk about um, a bit further. Now, the second point is, uh, and the second part of the, the paper is the career perspective. And I, I think that this is a uh, way more important part here because it talks about how Korea can initiate dialogues and talks with the EU in respect to the, uh, the mechanism. As we know, the economy is going to be, uh, uh, Korea is going to be impacted because Korea is one of the, the biggest trading partners when it comes to the iron and steel of the European Union. And the, the TPAM is going to cover iron and steel. So obviously there's going to be huge impacts on the industries of Korea. That's why it will be of interest to Korea to uh, initiate dialogues or even seek uh, assistance or even cooperation in respect of accelerating its, its green tr transition or joint development of green technologies or even innovation and decarbonization policies. So, but, but how the, the question is how Korea can do that because the EU has been very close in terms of developing the CBAM and that's why it has accepted a variety of criticisms. Um, so the question is how can the, Korea um, sort of approach the EU and say okay we have the legal basis and you are uh, required in a way to talk to us if we want to talk to you. Now this is where so the legal basis is um, where the focus is on and the legal basis is provided from the um, free trade uh, agreement be between the uh, Korea and the EU. So there is a very important clause within that agreement, which is Article 13, 11, which is saying that the parties commit to initiating cooperative activities as set out in Annex 13 of the agreement. And importantly, Annex 13 says that one of these areas of cooperation is actually the cooperation on trade-related aspects of the current and future international climate change regime, including issues um, relating to global carbon markets, ways to address adverse effects of trade on the climate, as well as means to promote low carbon technologies and energy efficiency. So all of the things that I've just mentioned on, say, uh, developing policies uh, that seek to, um, uh, you know, combat climate change or uh, developing um, policies on decarbonization, these are all topics that Korea can talk about or speak to the EU about. 
in, including the CBAM, because obviously the CBAM is going to have a huge impact on the international trade between the parties. The other possible uh, way and or rules uh, for Korea to approach the EU is through the monitoring mechanism within the, the agreement. So there is a, mo a monitoring mechanism which serves as, as a place for uh, looking at whether the parties have um, complied with their um, with their with, with the norms or with their obligations under the agreements, the obligations specifically related to trade and sustainable development. So the mechanism is um, represented by committees on trade and sustainable development and domestic advisory groups, as well as uh, a civil society dialogue mechanism. So normally this mechanism has a very institutional and very um, uh, interesting setup, and it has been argued by professionals that this monitoring mechanism, uh, specifically within the EU Korea trade agreement, is one of the most successful ones. So it is very um, interesting to see whether Korea would also approach the EU through that mechanism um, and seek dialogue the, uh, and policy cooperation. Um, now, the final uh, part of the, the paper is referring to the actions of, of Bulgaria, which could be taken so that the, that dialogue actually works. Why would Bulgaria be interested in that? As we know, uh, Bulgaria is also a huge importer of products which will be affected by the CBAM. It's not a importer of uh, a fire and steel from Korea, but it's actually importer of such products from other trading partners of EU. So the Bulgarian economy, even though it's a member state of the EU, is going to be hugely impacted by that mechanism as well. And therefore, Bulgaria should seek to sort of try and initiate these talks, try and initiate and make the EU be more proactive and design that mechanism um, in a way that the impact is going to be a bit alleviated for not only trading partners but also the member states. Um, so the recommendations broadly that we've um, we are basically trying to make with this paper are yeah I'm just going to go quickly to this slide and I'm going to go back uh, as well. So the main recommendation is that uh, the EU makes um, continuous and sustainable diplomatic efforts with the objectives of including uh, partnerships with states like Korea that have similar climate goals. As we know, Korea has such goals uh, as um, encoded in the Korean New Green Deal. They have very similar um, aspects as in uh, the EU Green Deal. Now, the second very important recommendation is that Bulgaria insists on um, the more practical approach being taken by the EU, the gradual application of the mechanism so that assessment is made uh, through that the application of the mechanism. And very importantly to insist that the EU is shifting its efforts to moving the regional ETS to the multilateral level. And uh, yeah, if you'd like to read more on these points, you can definitely read the paper. And um, yeah, that's the six. And uh, yeah, I'd like to thank you for the attention. I think we'll not be having time to discuss further the topic, but yeah, definitely read the paper if you'd like to learn more about the details. Of the thank you so much, uh, Anita. The papers, by the way, that we present today will all be available on EPI's website next week so that you could access uh, and read them uh, in full. I would uh, really like to thank Anita for her uh, brief introduction. Uh, and uh, if you have any questions or comments, I kindly ask you uh, to leave them for the end of the session when we will hopefully engage and on uh, a discussion on these important uh, topics. Uh, and I would like now to really make the transition uh, to the next topic uh, and to uh, invite uh, uh, Denise uh, to, to join us. Uh, and uh, deliver his uh, research uh, paper on the uh, opportunities that the European Green Deal and the Korean Green Deal uh, uh, provide to accelerate South Korea's uh, offshore renewable energy transition through policy lessons learned uh, from the EU strategy on offshore renewable energy. Uh, Denise, can you hear us? Uh, uh, you feel free to share your uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, hello, to, to can start. you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Uh, let me just uh, share the presentation before starting. Uh, but uh, Mariana, I have issues I cannot uh, share. Could you could you please give him permission to share?
If not, if we still have the issue, maybe we will share the presentation on our side. Let's see. Uh, the presentation though. I still cannot. If I don't have privileges to share from the host. If I could ask my colleague to switch to the right presentation though. Can you hear? Uh, can you see the slides now? Yes, I I can hear it. If we could go full screen, please. Okay, Denise, I, I believe you can uh, start and just give us a sign when you want us to switch the slide. All oh, all right. Uh, so the technical thing is done. Uh, I want to welcome everyone to this beautiful event today. Uh, it's morning in Sofia, Bulgaria, but for me in Korea and other people, it's uh, now lunchtime. So uh, I hope everyone had their coffee and are ready for uh, this exciting event. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank uh, Ms. Mariana Trifonova and Mr. Um, Yasin Georgiev for organizing this beautiful event. Um, very grateful for this opportunity as one of fighting the youngest fellows in this program now uh, let me introduce uh, myself first i'm denis pavlov i am international student in south korea uh, pusan in donga university and my major is global business but also i have interest in other topics such as um, uh, policy international cooperation especially in the part of uh, European Bulgaria Korea part. Also, I want to uh, welcome uh, His Excellency uh, Mr. Iho Sik, the ambassador of South Korea in Bulgaria, and uh, Pan Kyung Min, the director of Korea uh, Foundation in uh, Berlin office, and everyone else uh, in this event. So uh, after further ado, let's start with uh, the presentations. The topic for today and of the, the research paper that I have been doing is the examples from the European Green Deal for the Korean Green New Deal uh, on how to accelerate the Korean offshore renewable energy through policy lessons from the uh, European strategy on offshore renewable energy. Uh, can you go to the next slide, please? Uh, yes. Uh, so. Uh, quite a different to topic from uh, an it's a presentation, but let me introduce first the the goal of this uh, policy paper, recommendation policy paper, was to introduce a policy recommendation uh, from Europe to Korea uh, in order to help the Korean government and the policymaker uh, make more robust, strong, and uh, successful uh, policies in order to the, accelerate the transition of South Korea renewable energy sector as the country is pledging to uh, get a renewable energy uh, portion of 43.9% uh, until 2034 and as well as the European Union reach zero carbon neutrality by 2050. Uh, next uh, slide, please. So uh, the paper, I'll guide you uh, how the paper was structured so uh, we can be uh, on track on how we're following it. Uh, the paper first is examining uh, the, Kore the Korea overall renewable energy uh, state, how it's developing, uh, what are the trends and so on. After that, we are looking now for the world trends and state development of the offshore sector around the world. And after that, uh, we're looking upon the 
Korean policies regarding offshore uh, renewable uh, energy sectors? Uh, what policies are supporting, how they're supporting, what kind of, uh, let's say, troubles it has, and etc. After that, we will take a look on the uh, European part, the European Green New Deal, and especially the strategy, the European strategy for offshore renewable energy, what kind of similarities it has, and what we can extract from this. And after that, I'm going to present you for uh, policy recommendation that can fit Korea and help the country join the, the rest of the leading offshore renewable energy uh, states. Uh, so, first of all, renewable energy state. Uh, examining the, the current environment, a lot of uh, other policy and uh, tick tanks, even state resources are stating that Korea, uh, even though has big ambitions to reach uh, such carbon neutrality and big renewable energy state, especially in the offshore, uh, currently the country is very uh, dependent on fossil fuels and uh, primarily in imports. Second of uh, all, the total production of renewable energy, including all sources, was approximately 6.61%, uh, which is very low comparing to other OCD countries, such as Germany, which has uh, 46, if I'm not wrong, Denmark, uh, 50%, uh, and one of the neighbors of Korea, Japan, who has like 10%, 4% uh, more than Korea in that uh, part. Uh, looking more exactly about the percentage, uh, there's a it's needs uh, quite of like 2.64% increase per year to uh, meet the goals of Korea. So uh, examining this, oh, we can see that Korea is still uh, lagging behind other countries, but has big potential for that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so uh, I found this beautiful quote examining and showing the importance of uh, offshore by Abraham Lincoln. Uh, and uh, I can say, even I said in the paper, uh, from ancient times until now, the sea and the oceans were, were like the front, frontier of the human civilization. Expansion, switching new lands, new opportunities, connecting people, civilization, uh, exchanging ideas. Uh, but in these days, it's not only this, it's, only, it's also a source of power that we can harnessed to accelerate and stop the climate change. Next slide, please. Currently, the uh, world offshore uh, wind trends are very strong. If I can say, it's predicted that uh, the wind capacity will increase 15 folds into, uh, in, until 2040, reaching 1 trillion industry over the following two decades. Uh, according to IRENA, primarily the solar and wind are the mainly um, generators of this renewable. And it's forecast that most of the offshore uh, renewable energy generation until 2050 will be produced in Asia, six, uh, uh, 760 gigawatts of power in primarily China, uh, Japan, Korea, and Taiwan. Next slide, please. Going now to the Korean offshore state, the government, as I said, shows strong ambition to use this power and lead the world. In a recent statement from the President Moon Jae-in, uh, when he was talking about the opening of a new uh, offshore floating power in Ulsan, a neighbor city uh, to me in Busan. He stated that the government will provide every necessary support under the goal for making South Korea one of the world uh, top five offshore wind powerhouse by 2013, uh, getting in the group of Germany, Denmark, Britain, one of the biggest offshore uh, power producing countries. Next slide, please. Uh, Korean offshore uh, wind state, uh, even with the big ambitions, 
by doing analysis, it shows currently uh, it ha it's lacking a lot of development and uh, especially production of energy. Um, the percentage ratio of wind uh, generation out of total generation in 2020, looking at the data was only like 0.56% uh, and currently, uh, even though many are developing, the country is still uh, lacking the total ratio of renewable energy. Uh, usually the, the developers of uh, such projects, uh, they're very capital consuming. So mostly major constructing companies such as uh, Hyundai or Daewoo uh, are main players. But recently it's starting to show that even medium companies are getting interest in uh, that field. Next slide, please. Uh, the offshore wind uh, policy of uh, Korea. Next slide, please. Uh, the Korea offshore wind policy. Um, we have uh, uh, the paper is examining uh, a few policies tackling especially renewable and uh, offshore. First one is the renewable energy 3020 uh, implementation plan. Uh, the goal of that paper is to set goals of what the country need to produce until a certain date. Um, in this example is 20% uh, uh, of, of energy from renewable sources must be done by 2030. The second one is the ninth basic plan, which is uh, showing the generation of power using re renewables uh, is to be 70, 7.8 gigawatts of effective capacity and reach to secure uh, for, uh, 42, uh, uh, 22 24.9 gigawatts of wind power by 2034. Uh, after that, we have also the Green New uh, Deal plan, which is the main motivation force of the industry um, to reach these goals, which is promising uh, a big investments of 61 trillion won and creating uh, more than a half million uh, jobs in that uh, field. Uh, next slide, please. After looking about the uh, Korean part, we can now focus and shift to the European and especially first uh, introducing the uh, EU Green uh, New Deal plan. Uh, as the Korean uh, Green New Deal plan, the European one, has the same ambition and goals, uh, reaching carbon neutrality, accelerating in the renewable sector, and primarily focusing on harnessing the offshore uh, wind power. Uh, with this illustration, I can show that fighting climate change is like a game with cooperation and power we can beat uh, the bad guy and how to do it uh, with strong policies. Uh, next slide, please. The EU uh, Green New Deal has one especially interesting uh, strategy plan, the EU search in offshore renewable energy, uh, which is a long-term strategy plan uh, on how the sea passing such as fishing industry, uh, aquaculture, shipping, tourism, defense, uh, every participant in the CPASN can cooperate together and also uh, make space and help the offshore uh, sector, as there are a lot of stakeholders there. The EU, the EU plan also uh, put importance in the domestic union industry and encouraging the industry and even expanding it abroad. Uh, also, the plan has policies on uh, member states, how they co can uh, cooperate, but unfortunately, this cannot be uh, used for Korea as uh, it's uh, not suitable, but still the plan has interesting ideas that uh, Korean policymakers can uh, use. And examining them, we have uh, get to uh, four recommendation plans. Uh, next slide, please. And next one. The first policy proposal, the, the plan is showing is increasing the low support from others uh, stakeholders and local residents. Uh, Korea currently has a kind of uh, issue with the fishing industry. 
uh, which is uh, sharing the sea basin with offshore renewable energy plan. The fishing industry is very dependent on the sea, and they have that fear that uh, when such constructions and plants are built, uh, it can damage uh, the industry, and uh, they're not very happy about that. So other stakeholders are concerned. Korea uh, kn knows this. They uh, stated in their plan, but the plan is not showing exactly how it to be done. Uh, with the European uh, strategy plan, the EU is promoting uh, cooperation in terms of like forums, including all uh, stakeholders that have interest in from NGOs, uh, communities, residents who are, are close to such plans, uh, investors and all kinds of participants to share uh, their worries, their ideas, and to collaborate together in order to solve uh, common problems. So such forum will be very interesting for Korea if it also includes other participants from European countries, such as like Denmark, which has a really a lot of renewable uh, energy parts in their countries, experience, Germany and England as well. Uh, second policy recommendation is improving the domestic business hesitancy. Even though there is a, big, uh, a lot of players, uh, such as the big uh, heavy industries, Promoting those interest, industries to develop in the country and, exper, and expand is important. Uh, we can see from history that uh, in the beginning, the one of the biggest uh, chebos, such as uh, uh, Hyundai, Samsung, they started small, especially uh, uh, they in the shipping industry. And slowly, slowly they expanded us in Korea, such as abroad and uh, had really big uh, if I can say global win share. So if the country can promote again, these expansions of those big corporations with such projects that take so much uh, risk and capital, especially the renewable offshore, Korea can strengthen its industry and also expand it uh, across the region to uh, developing uh, countries such as uh, Vietnam, Philippines that also have uh, renewable offshore renewable energy potential, but they don't have the resource. So that's a very good opportunity for Korea to use that. The third policy, uh, next slide please, I forgot to tell, is the uh, policy, uh, the roadmap for developing R&D, especially in the flo uh, floating wind energy farms. Uh, currently, analysis shows that Korea have a, really a big of technical power, uh, 546 gigawatts, uh, but even though the economic ability to be way lower than the technical, this is this is showing a field of opportunities for South Korea to uh, especially develop and uh, build a roadmap how the country can harness most of this power. As uh, with every year, the energy consumption and demand is increasing and stationary wind farms will not be enough. So focusing on that part, developing robust policy will be beneficial for the transition to uh, green energy in Korea. Uh, next slide, please. And the final fourth policy proposal is establishing a circular economy approach for the offshore wind industry. Uh, European Union states this very clearly that circular economy is very important because as more and more uh, such wind farms are built, uh, in the end, they have um, a lifespan. So after the lifespan is finished, uh, it can cause a little bit of problems, the commissioning, uh, recycling and so on. It can also be har harmful for the sea basin and uh, even uh, having a pollution uh, sense. So the Korea can use this uh, idea of uh, making its own circle in economy, especially in the offshore sectors, uh, promoting circle economy, and um, focusing on th that part particularly. And that's uh, the, the most, uh, the four uh, biggest uh, policy proposals. Uh, for conclusion, next, uh, next uh, slide please, I forgot to tell once again. Uh, 
the policy is just opening uh, a way how European Union and South Korea can work together, learn from together and expand. Of course, uh, it's not a fit for all the, the European uh, strategy plan, but by examining it and colonizing it to fit the current environment, Korea can gain a lot, learn a lot and expand. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, that's all from me. And thank you for the attention. I hope I'm on the time. <laughs> thank you so much, uh, Denise, uh, for uh, your presentation. Uh, uh, indeed, this is a perfect example how here in uh, the Next Generation Korea Fellows Incubator, we can not only focus on uh, research that helps uh, uh, Bulgaria in the sense that uh, we are traditionally conditioned to believe that uh, uh, this is all about uh, transferring Korean know-how to Bulgaria, but uh, this shows that it is a two-way street. So the European uh, uh, regulatory framework and experience could also serve uh, and, and be useful uh, to Korea as well and open up uh, new partnership opportunities uh, between uh, EU and Korea. And obviously it is a question of discussion uh, uh, here for us, how Bulgaria could also benefit uh, from this exchange and uh, uh, fit into the wider EU-Korea framework while uh, strengthening its own bilateral relations uh, with uh, uh, Korea. Uh, once again, thank you so much, uh, Denise. Uh, and now I would like to uh, offer the floor to uh, the third set of uh, uh, researchers uh, who worked uh, uh, with us uh, uh, this year. And uh, I'm particularly excited because this is the first time within the framework of the project that we actually have a collaboration between a Bulgarian and a Korean uh, scholar working together and uh, coming up with a paper together. Uh, and I believe that uh, uh, our uh, colleague Chang Jung Lee, Dr. Chang Jung Lee is uh, with us uh, virtually. So maybe first I will uh, give him uh, the floor for a few uh, words and then Slavina will tackle the presenting the paper. Yep. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah. Okay, so Chang Jun, uh, you have the floor for a few uh, minutes now. If you want to address uh, the audience, please unmute yourself. Uh, okay. Um, okay, I didn't expect I have a chance to tell out. So uh, uh, actually good, uh, good evening here and good morning there. And I, I am Chang Jun Lee, a professor in uh, Hanyang University. And I and Slavina were uh, a friend uh, when Slavina was in a uh, Korea student, Korean student as a student. So that was kind of, you know, just uh, that kind of friendship actually did, did really good for uh, proceeding some kind of collaboration and everything. So I think, yeah. So when I heard this kind of project, I just spontaneously said yes, yes, we could do it because uh, that is kind of good opportunity to uh, do something together uh, for uh, for two nations. And I, I hope this paper, I'm not sure, but I, I hope this kind of working papers are series are uh, helping uh, two nations relationship and promote some <clears throat> economic relationship and also political relationship as well. So I, I really, um, uh, uh, I really hope that. And uh, our paper is kind of focusing on uh, bilateral relationship, but uh, so that is that is kind of experimental starting point for uh, from us because actually we had many ideas uh, popping up uh, to do doing doing for uh, research and you know for for everything, but. Mariana actually commented me and us to uh, 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 focus more on kind of policy, policy recommendation and policy implications. So actually, we uh, left out all the difficult uh, equations uh, from the papers. So now we are kind of form uh, to to show uh, our kind of essence idea. Kind of you know the, the essence idea is that just uh, we want to promote uh, the bilateral trade between two nations by using some kind of metrics, but that metrics is uh, based on the two nations demand and two nations specialization. I think, I hope uh, Slavina will uh, uh, 
Slovenia uh, uh, planned and prepared for our presentation. So maybe she, <laughs> yeah, she will proceed. Okay. Would uh, not take the credit, but probably the blame for really cutting out of uh, uh, the paper some very valuable academic aspect of it. But we wanted to uh, bring it to the domain of uh, uh, policy uh, research, policy oriented research, uh, so that it is really focused on providing uh, uh, useful guidelines to policymakers on how uh, we could. Uh, make trade between our two countries uh, more efficient and obviously uh, the paper in its more academic uh, version is uh, quite universal in the sense that uh, the methodology they propose could be applied to uh, uh, other countries as well but our focus now is uh, Bulgaria and uh, uh, Korea and let me just uh, ask for the presentation to, to start uh, and to be shown on the screen. Uh, so that Swavina uh, could proceed with uh, uh, highlighting the important aspects and the uh, findings and obviously the policy recommendations uh, from the paper. Thank you, Mariana. Uh, I didn't plan to start my presentation in this way, but I will use the opportunity to thank first you because you were the trigger behind this kind of collaboration that is firstly happening in this forum. Thank you for that. And secondly, to thank Chang Jun Lee for joining this event, to really accepting this opportunity and adding value, a lot of value to our uh, collaborative paper. And um, I will mention a little bit of the calculations that we did in the, in the presentation. Uh, for this paper, but as uh, both already mentioned, it's going to be dropped to the um, more um, auditory, um, uh, easy access of understanding for the purposes of the policy uh, recommendations at the end. I'm trying to switch and I will switch. So maybe our so colleague will switch and you just okay. give us a hand. Yeah, okay. 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 Then uh, those are the contents of the presentation today. I will try to make a brief explanation of the diverging paths that the two nations had in their development and how this impacted the trade. What they did in the exported and imported relatively in the year 2019, the evolutionary territory that they had in the trades and products in which each of the countries is specialized in. This is basically what we did as a academic research. And um, Professor Lee actually invested a lot of time to do the right calculations and to bring up the right numbers in there to see the actual picture of the trade between the two nations. And then we are having a little bit of um, suggestions on specific products for more efficient bilateral trade between the two nations and policy recommendations. Yeah, okay. So uh, we will be uh, looking at this presentation from twofold perspective. One is the Bulgarian one, one is the Korean one. We start with the Bulgarian view. Um, Bulgaria, Bulgaria had a really difficult history between the World War II and World War I. The country was isolated and mainly agricultural. Uh, it was really considered as a poor country, isolated, as you said, in the corner of the, of the map on, on Europe not much of a development at the time. And then after the World War II in uh, year 46, the um, socialism took, uh, took <clears throat> part in the country. Uh, it was considered a socialistic republic for um, many years until 1990 when it was actually changed to a uh, democratic republic. During this period of time, Bulgaria was um, developed under plant economy, meaning that we were running five years plans of developing specific um, products that we considered are of you know, high demand. And during the time, the high demand came again from the socialistic bloc. The exports we did at the time weren't going further than, than the socialistic bloc. But since that time, the high and uh, rapid industrialization of the country began. Then in the year 57, the industrial agrar agrarian country that Bulgaria became developed a high industrialized um, economy, producing one of the first small um, portable electronic devices, one of the first um, computers in the socialistic blocks that we are proud of. And all Bulgarians know this, this uh, happened with, with our constant efforts of the, of the engineers. 
And since that time, Bulgaria had specialized in the heavy industry, electricity generation, mining, metallurgy, and mechanical engineering, as well as the chemical industry. On the other side, Korea also had, of course, really um, heavy post-war period after the Korean War, around the year 50. Then, um, due to Japan colonial rule and the influence of the US, uh, the economic growth began, as it was defined by the uh, President Myon uh, in his uh, New Year's evening um, speech, this, this transitioning period from the post-war towards the developed economy was described as the miracle on the Han River. It boosted in the industrialization, heavy and rapid industrialization of the country. And starting in the uh, 70s, the heavy chemical industry was really boosted and there was specific uh, acts driving the, the industrialization of the country. Since that time, the industrialization was focused mainly on the heavy machinery, steel producing, shipbuilding, electronics, automobiles, electronic integrated circuits, and ICT. The last three are the ones that are taking the first place in year 2019 as well. So the Korea had really coherent and constant development uh, in their path. Uh, what we're looking at the moment are the export baskets in the two nations in the year 2019. On the left side, you can see that the most things that Korea has exported, this is worldwide, were focused around the ICT, the electronic integrated circuits, cars, and heavy machinery. At the same time, Bulgaria had more in uh, exporting the tourism and travel, transportation, ICT, uh, the yellow part that you see on the right side is uh, rep representing the agricultural um, production and then the chemical on the right side of the yellow part. Then um, you can see that um, we have really touching bases uh, at the, that time of producing, but still not so coherent in the Bulgarian part. And this will be uh, more visible on the next slide where we will track down what we've been exporting to each other. So the first view that we are having here is the exports from Bulgaria to Korea specifically. And because we couldn't capture for the purposes of this paper, the whole period from 2000 to till this year, we're focusing on three main years, 2000, 2010, and 2019. As you can see, the basic things that Bulgaria has exported to Korea are copper waste and scrap, artificial yarn, textiles, and um, in 2010, again, is something from the agricultural wheat and nestling scrap again, this time from precious metals. And in 2019, corn, nestling wheat, again, agricultural. In 2019, the agricultural part of exports from Bulgaria to Korea reached out around 40% of the total exports, which made Bulgaria look in Korean's eyes as an agricultural, mainly, and raw material country. In the next slide, you will see uh, the exports that Korea did to Bulgaria. You will see a strong coherence as it's purpley pinkish on, on the slides. Cars mainly reaching out the highest percentage in year 2000, then dropping a little bit, taking out by the semiconductor devices that we'll speak a little bit later on, and polyacetides. Um, this again shows the coherence policy of Korea export and of the Korean industrialization um, path. Next slide. So uh, during the research, we um, developed our specific uh, numerators. The RCA or the, the revealed comparative advantages already highly um, recognized and used uh, measurement of comparative advantage of products. We uh, based our research on this one. For this table, you can see that RCA greater than one means that the country is effective, effective exporter of a um, specific good. This is the uh, map for Bulgaria. So in 2019, what we are good at are, as you can see, sunflower seeds and refined copper, Again, we centralize ourselves around the chemical, uh, around the metallurgy, around the agricultural, 
And this is the things that we're good, in, good at exporting. The next slide, we will see what is Korea good at exporting. Also metallic seeds, cargo ships and similar vessels, the uh, heavy industry and shipbuilding in Korea is producing a really good quality and uh, really a high quantity of those and exporting. And we can see here that they have really a strategic part in the world for those producing, again, a coherent industrialization in the heavy machinery uh, production and in the chemical industries. As you can see, this is the sector that is more influenced and more, more um, revealed here. In the next slide, we developed with Professor Lee a new opportunity index, product opportunity index for country A's export to product B to country B. If uh, the opportunity index is greater and the RCA or the revealed comparative advantage is greater than one, then we found this specific niche that wasn't exploited until now in between two countries. So this can show you what the two countries are good at producing, good at exporting, but haven't exported much of it in between themselves. On the top side, this is the uh, products that Bulgaria have a niche to export to Korea. This table represents just that collection of it. In the paper, you will see in the appendix because it's a huge table, a full list of it. Here to emphasize again the copper that we are producing, apparently we are exporting, but never to Korea. In the uh, pre last column, OE, uh, you can see what is the demand of uh, Korea to import such goods. It's a huge demand, and the column with a lot of zeros represents that we have never, or like ridiculously small amount, we have exported to Korea. So this is a great opportunity for us to export um, for Korea. On the next slide, we turn the view what Korea can export to Bulgaria, because it's important to see uh, what they are good at and what we eager to import. It's the same logic here. Opportunity Index will show um, what uh, the country is uh, good at, specialized it. The zeros again represent that we have never or like barely minimum we imported from Korea. Flat right, uh, flat road, iron, and other uh, kind of um, metals, petroleum coal, buses, as we said, the heavy machinery and the cargo uh, ship buildings uh, in Korea are really good and we are in eager need of that. So this is our representation for um, the sectors that we can target for importing from Korea as our um, research on the opportunity index highlights the, the good niche for that. On the next slide, we will stop by on several products that we highlighted from our paper. The first one is the semiconductors. I don't think there is a person in this forum that doesn't know that Korea is a great producer of semiconductors since the industrialization of the country. And since this year, the European Union has a great need of uh, semiconductors, as, as said by the European Union Parliament. Uh, Europe is in need of semiconductors and Asia is the uh, place to, to supply it from. From um, that perspective, where Korea exported semiconductors to in the year 2019, as you can mainly see, it's China and then the Asian countries as Vietnam, Japan, Hong Kong. And where did Bulgaria imported semiconductors from? Germany, France, China a little bit, and I don't see on the map Korea. So why not handling this uh, together. And I know this is a really step forward, but there is a, a Bulgarian dream for a long years now that there is a Korean factory built in Bulgaria. It never happened. And I think this is the right time now to happen because there is a high demand. We can actually produce something that is local and can be an entry to the European market through our country. Next slide, please. The next thing that we focus on is something that uh, is underestimated uh, uh, from my side, from Korea, because Bulgaria has a really great tradition in producing high quality wines. 
And according to a paper that we cite in our paper, uh, wine is very interesting thing for Asian countries. The import in the recent years is high. Even though it's high, the main um, importer from Bulgaria of Bulgarian wine is China. The South Korea is um, really high demanding country and wine is still considered as a, a luxurious beverage. However, the interest of young Koreans to wine is really high and the boutique wine that Bulgaria can produce can really serve well the Korean market if exported properly. Next slide, please. Your word, this is something that we Bulgarians are really proud of. We always claim that we were the first inventors of this one. Korea in the recent years is uh, really interested in uh, yogurt and the health benefits of it. The imports that Korea is doing of yogurt, strangely enough for me, comes from Greece, France, Germany. And Bulgaria is not on the map and Bulgaria has really the unique uh, Lactobacillus bulgaricus uh, bacteria that actually boost the um, uh, health and the immune system that we can um, export to there, but we didn't did it until now. And where do we export our yogurt to? Greece. So Korea imports from Greece and we export to Greece, where we can actually circle this around. Next slide, please. Cheese, one really specific product. When you say cheese in the most countries, you imagine something yellowish with host. In Bulgaria, it's a white cheese. It's really delicious product, product that uh, goes really well with wine and still it's underestimated in the Asian countries. You can see again our main exporters on the left side, Greece, Germany, United Kingdom. And for the cheese, the main importers of Korea are United States, Germany, France. The thing that is really important to mention here on those products that mainly come from the agricultural perspective of view, um, until now, there, was, uh, there were great competitors on the Korean market from the United States and Chile because of the trade agreements that those countries had with Korea. But since we are part of the European Union and since the European Union has the agreement with Korea, I think this is a really great niche because this will reduce 15% of the, uh, uh, of the uh, financial part. Uh, that these exports can go to Korea on a cheaper price and introduced to the um, Korean population. Next slide, please. Something that also um, it's not really considered in the in the um, that kind of how to say mathematical view of uh, uh, RCA and of uh, product opportunity index is cosmetics that Korea is really great at producing. It's really popular. And uh, as you can see on the right side, this is the exports Korea does of cosmetics. It's really popular among the neighboring countries, among the Asian countries. It's getting uh, to start, get popular into, into the Europe as well, but um, really not um, well, well distributed and not well advertised. Bulgaria on the other side is really good at producing essential oils. Um, we have really great niche of producing one of the most precious essential oils based for perfumes and other cosmetic products, the rose oil. The thing with the rose oil production is that there is um, a specific amount that each year can be produced, not more than 2,000 kilograms. Still, it's the high quality. The other great producer, the other only great producer of rose oil is Turkey. So we are the two and only producers of this oil in the, in the world. And still we are importing our cosmetics from France, Romania, Germany, Italy, as you can see. And there is no better niche from our perspective of cooperation in between the two, two countries of producing cosmetics based on the knowledge Korea already has in cosmetics and uh, essential oils, but there can produce the quality and the quantity we can um, actually deliver to them. Next slide, please. So uh, based on our research, which was really academical and um, with this kind of um, romantic uh, goings to the agricultural or cosmetics, products, our recommendations will be boosting the partnerships between the two nations, of course, on the high demand products, as we highlighted the semiconductors is such a product, especially for this year, especially for this decade. Ease process for visa application for high proficient Korean workers, because we can welcome here really um, 
now not joking with that, uh, we can welcome here a building of factory for semiconductors so we can easily jointly uh, enter the European market. Systematic advertisement of the Bulgaria and its products because uh, to be honest with you, I've contacted uh, with one of the uh, wine evaluation um, competitions in Korea and asked them, it's a Wine Korea Challenge, it's annually held, held. I've asked them how many participants from Bulgaria they had in the in this year, and they said only one. They said the Bulgarian wine is free, really not well recognized in Korea, but we would love to hear and try more of it. Of course, that's why we are suggesting more adver advertisements because we know we are good at something, but not everybody else knows that. We should put our efforts in advertising it. Partnership on the value added products and conductors I already mentioned, then financial and document submission support for fair application. This is also something that I have to highlight here again. If we go to the uh, wine challenge competition, for example, the submission of the application is kind of, of uh, hard to fill in and people are failing but uh, submitting their application. So it's not only the financial part of it, but it's also the know-how uh, part of it. Building recognition around the globe through information campaigns. I cannot highlight that more. Next slide. The building that I'm mentioning, expanding research and development of products based on the Bulgarian essential oils and cosmetic products and experience we already have. And one thing that I think is missing because for Bulgarians it's clear, clear in that kind of initiatives, government support is not always granted, it's rarely granted. So probably building some kind of associations in between um, NGOs or small factories or family uh, factories of essential oils, of wine, of cheese, whatever can bring actually more focus and more, more attention to the products they're producing. And actually bringing out the MOU signing in between the two countries, real life, small and medium enterprises. So, slides. Thank you for your attention. This is all from me for now. More you can read in the paper. Thank you so much, uh, Slovina, and uh, thank you also, uh, Dr. Uh, Chang Jung Yi, for uh, producing this uh, uh, paper. Uh, indeed, many of the topics you touched upon, many of the product groups are quite relevant in the policy discussion that we are having uh, here today and also in the uh, wider uh, discourse in Bulgaria because uh, you touched upon agriculture and wheat and we had that uh, those of you who follow uh, Bulgaria's uh, uh, political scene know that uh, negotiations were taking place uh, in the past few days uh, uh, between uh, political parties trying to form a government and uh, th there was some uh, major uh, issues to be addressed in agriculture, specifically uh, with regard to, to, to large um, um, farm producers' uh, subsidies and how this would affect uh, bilateral uh, trade. You also touched upon uh, uh, the unexploited opportunity for Bulgaria to, to import uh, flat iron uh, uh, from uh, Korea, uh, something which uh, is linked to what uh, Anita presented because yes. if the if the uh, carbon border adjustment mechanism enters into force the way it is designed now this would probably uh, hamper uh, such efforts so we all need to uh, engage proactively in such a discussion to be aware of how uh, countries like Bulgaria could actually lose uh, from from uh, lose an opportunity uh, from otherwise uh, very remarkable initiative by the European uh, Commission that that fits into our wider uh, uh, vision and values about the future and about uh, our carbon neutral uh, continent uh, and uh, climate uh, change mitigation. We also touched upon uh, several very uh, traditional. Uh, uh, products for Bulgaria, such as wine, cheese, uh, uh, cosmetics, especially the rose oil. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, uh, in this area, mostly we have small and medium uh, enterprises who need to uh, receive proper support in order to, to, to get their products out there, reach Korea, be, uh, get the enough promotion uh, and uh, maybe some assistance on how to enter the market. And uh, we'll make sure here on our part, uh, once the paper is uh, published next week, to also forward it to uh, relevant institutions in Bulgaria, such as the Bulgaria Small and Medium Enterprises Promotion Agency, uh, to see if uh, 
some of your recommendations could be of use in that respect. I, I also believe we have online with us a representative of uh, Kotra. Uh, so uh, this is also uh, an example of how we need to strengthen uh, business cooperations between uh, Bulgaria and Korea and uh, the importance of institutions uh, to be played uh, uh, there. So thank you very much uh, for this uh, quite informative uh, uh, paper. As, as noted, uh, there is much more in it uh, that you will be able to access uh, through the full uh, text. Uh, as I see that we have a few minutes left uh, by the end of this uh, session, I would like to open the floor for comments and discussions, both for our uh, venue attendees and those online. Uh, our online guests could use the Q&A uh, option that appears at the bottom of your uh, screen. And uh, we will, if, if we see any questions there, we'll try to uh, react as soon as uh, possible. Mm. First, any questions from the from the venue, or maybe I know that uh, maybe I will give the floor to uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Yasin Gurgiev for a second because uh, uh, he was one of the mentors, as you know, of, uh, of uh, the papers. Uh, uh, maybe he could share with us a bit about the uh, the the process of writing and a, a few comments on the on the paper produced by uh, Denise. I myself was a mentor of uh, Anita, so might also uh, try to comment uh, a few words. But uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Gurgiev, if you want to 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 start the discussion, so to speak. Sure. Uh, so uh, once again, thank you to all the, the 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 fellow this year to to Anita, to Denise, and to Margarita. I as mentioned I worked closely with Dennis, and it was really an enjoyable uh, cooperation. Uh, we started uh, uh, on this journey with the idea to cover the, the European Green Deal and to cover the Korean New Deal as a whole. But then we uh, found out that it is an effort that could last for ages, actually, because it is a really a big journey, so comprehensive that uh, we are not able to, 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 to stick to the time limits that we have within uh, the incubator. So we spent uh, some time in really downsizing the scope of this activity. Uh, and I'm really uh, happy that at the end, uh, Dennis focused entirely on, on uh, this offshore renewable energy topic which is one of the topics that bears huge potential for both the EU uh, uh, and Korea. Uh, and uh, if, we, if we narrow down uh, our look, we see that it is also an area with potential for Bulgaria as a Black Sea country. And one of the key wordings from this, in the, uh, from this exercise, uh, actually, for me and for Dennis, I think, was the fact that we all uh, share, I mean, the European Union, Bulgaria, and Korea, we all share the common goal to have a clean, sustainable uh, environment. But uh, at the end of the day, we have to, uh, to find an agreement on, on, on the way we are going to reach this goal. And actually one of the first recommendations, actually this is the first rec recommendation uh, uh, that uh, was uh, presented by Dennis that we, we need a very uh, intensive multi-stakeholder dialogue to bring people that are mostly affected from this transition together to make their uh, voice heard in order to, to facilitate the transition, to make it uh, inclusive for everyone, to uh, not to leave anyone behind as, is, as one of the key messages of uh, the European Green Deal, and to, uh, to somehow um, and look into the future, but uh, by accounting for the different perspectives of uh, old stakeholders. So in that perspective, uh, I think it is a really tangible recommendation, something that, uh, uh, that we have to, to, to carefully look at. And uh, I would like to, to, to highlight on this, uh, not uh, downsizing the other recommendations, but this one was one of the first recommendations. And we, uh, we agreed that uh, when we speak about, in this case, about offshore energy, we have to think a lot about the local communities, about uh, the local communities who are living from their skills in the, uh, the, the, the fisher, fish industry, uh, to, to think about uh, what are they going to lose from this transition. Uh, so from that perspective, I think it was a, a journey, uh, and I'm happy that we, uh, we went through, uh, through this journey together and we were, were able to 
to somehow to extrapolate or to highlight some recommendations that fit for the future and that are equally important for both sides, for the EU and for uh, South Korea and as a country that is part of the EU, they're equally important for Bulgaria. So Dennis, uh, my best regards to Busan. Uh, take care and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing your future advancement because I think this topic is really fruitful and uh, there's a lot of potential to, to work on it in the future. And since uh, we discussed the topic is quite broad, why not to, to finish your PhD in that, uh, in that topic in Korea and then to bring uh, uh, this shared knowledge to, to the EU. So thank you once again and take care. Thank you, Mr. Dubdiv, uh, for that uh, brief uh, commentary. I also, as a mentor, would like to maybe say a few words about the process of working with Anita, which was an absolute pleasure. But uh, we started, uh, if you remember, from a very different point, right? Uh, we started from uh, a, a research paper that uh, Anita had uh, wrote back in 2019 that was examining the uh, sustainability uh, clauses in the EU-Korea FTA and the opportunities that offered. And we wanted to do something about uh, matching uh, really, again, the, the, the European and the Korean Green New Deal. Uh, but we slowly in a discussion and uh, in kind of a collaborative uh, spirit with all the other fellows and mentors reached uh, the point where we decided why not focus on something very specific which is the uh, carbon border adjustment mechanism and i'm extremely proud of her for completing uh, uh, this uh, evaluation and assessment first of all of how uh, the cbam uh, mechanism itself uh, could be made as a wto compliant because this is the first hurdle to overcome uh, so even that part of the paper itself as a standalone uh, piece, I think is quite valuable and I'm not aware of anything like this being done in Bulgaria in particular. So uh, you could uh, also consult uh, the paper uh, regardless of the uh, Bulgaria career link just in general as, a, as an assessment of the mechanism. But really for our purposes, the most uh, valuable part was of course the second one where we hmm, really showcase how uh, Korea would be affected if the mechanism enters into force and uh, uh, I need to propose some valuable uh, ways uh, how to engage our partners in Korea uh, in, a, in a dialogue that would help us resolve uh, the issues and, and uh, move forward together towards our carbon neutrality without uh, jeopardizing uh, trade and without uh, jeopardizing some key industries. And also, of course, uh, the wake up call that we receive uh, from this paper is that Bulgaria should really take a proactive stance together with other uh, member states who are uh, affected uh, because our industries, it, it, there is no uh, doubt, are very carbon intensive and we need carbon intensive uh, uh, imports, uh, which is something that uh, we need to tackle. We need to reform the economy uh, to, to, to green it, to make it more sustainable. But before that happens, because it's a long term process, we need we need viable solutions for the for the now and not and not necessarily for the future in, in 30 years. And, and this is what this paper does. Uh, it uh, uh, showcases how Bulgaria should be proactive on the European scene in trying to uh, find solutions together with our uh, uh, trade partners from outside uh, the EU. And a very interesting observation that we uh, reached uh, while working on the paper and then one of the recommendations is that actually, yes, CPAM is, uh, ha has all the good intentions, but it should be just a transitional mechanism and uh, in the long run, the European Union, as uh, uh, in, in its ambition of being a global leader, uh, uh, fighting climate change should probably strive towards engaging partners such as Korea in uh, uh, globalizing the uh, emissions trading system. And this is probably the most sustainable uh, solution that, that uh, we propose and uh, that Anita highlighted uh, in the paper. I uh, just want to check briefly if we have any comments or questions from the online participants. I don't see any. And uh, if there is anybody here at the venue who would like to, to question or comment, uh, otherwise, I would like to thank you for your attention uh, and to uh, propose a, a, a brief uh, interruption. Uh, we will be back together reconvening at uh, uh, noon. Uh, uh, 
Sofia time. This would be 7 p.m. Uh, uh, in uh, Seoul. So please uh, stay with us. Those who are online could just uh, remain in the session and we will uh, resume uh, uh, with the second panel uh, at the in roughly uh, 25 minutes. The second panel, as you know, is benefits of EU uh, Korea and Bulgaria Korea cooperation on regional stability and good governance. And then we have quite interesting uh, topics coming up uh, next. So uh, those of you online stay tuned and those in the value, uh, in the venue we look uh, forward to uh, keeping us uh, with you, keeping you with us and uh, keeping you engaged uh, here in the hall thank you once again